proud to have them. Um, I will tell you that um, there is a, I firmly believe in the last line of the Declaration of Independence. With firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. We have to link arms and um, pool our talents, um, our strengths, cover each other's weaknesses, um, and put our money where our heart is. Um, there are organizations uh, that need your support, and there are organizations that are absolutely alone, absolutely alone, and they do remarkable work. Um, yesterday, I told you that I went out and um, I went to a speech uh, that I wanted to uh, I wanted to hear um, because the people the people that were um, holding this um, this book release, if you will, um, event were uh, are in the business of telling the truth, and w there's nobody nobody out there that is telling the truth. They are so few and far between. One of them is um, Palestinian Media Watch. It is a, um, a group that monitors what people are actually saying. When, when you see some of the stuff we're going to outline, when you see what people actually say in their own language compared to what is actually being said on American or Western television by the same person, same day, same person, it's stunning. When you see the deception that is going on and the indoctrination, really see it and read it, the difference is staggering. There's no reason, there, nobody in their right mind, nobody in their right mind would support the other side. Nobody. Itamar Marcus, he is co-author of uh, Deception, director of Palestinian Media Watch, and it is an honor to have you here with everything that you um, do all the time. We use, your, we use your information all the time because it's not spin. Tell me about, tell me about the book. This is so important. Well, the book was born uh, actually during the height of the renewed peace process, the so-called peace process, mm -hmm. uh, May, two th May 2010. The Palestinians agreed to come back and talk with, the, with Israel. And over the next five months of, of first proximity talks and then direct talks, we wanted to see if there was any change in the Palestinian world. So we followed them even more closely, and we started analyzing. And we saw that even while the peace process was renewed, there were two different messages. To the rest of the world, they were saying, we recognize Israel. We've stopped violence. Uh, we've stopped the hate incitement. To their own people, there was actually intensification of certain aspects. Of the demonization was intensified. It was just a world that no one was aware of. And then we said, you know what? Let's put this all together into a book so that nobody can say they don't know. First of all, where can you get this? The book will be available very shortly from our website. Okay. Uh, that's palwatch.org. Okay. P a uh, 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 p a l watch. That's right. Dot org. Okay. Um, I, I just before we get into, uh, I'm going to have him take you through the book a bit. But before we get into this, I want you to know this is they're, they're all quotes. They're all actual um, pictures. Bring this up on the screen again here, real quick. They're all just pictures of actual screen grabs. These are all quotes. This is not somebody's opinion. This is quote, and I know this because. I collect um, books, old books, especially books that that showed that show evil back in the 1920s and 30s that were ignored, both saying the things that are in here and also those who were warning like this and nobody listened. I collect. I'm telling you, this book A is really important for today. I'm, I, I want to talk to you about sending this to every talk show host in America. Every talk show host in America needs to own this book more than anything else. This book needs to be owned by anyone who cares about Israel. All of your arguments are in here, and they are without question. It's not anybody's opinion. It's them in their own words, period. The other reason you should own this book is it needs to go into a time capsule because um, your children are going it's going to, it's going to damn us all, quite honestly. Because your children are going to say, did you know? Yep. Yep. Volumes, page after page after page. They told us what they were going to do. Now let's go through this. Let's start at um, demonization of Israel. Right. So to the world, the Palestinian Authority has committed over and over again to stop the hate incitement. 
uh, to their own people. Uh, you cannot imagine the full range of um, lies and libels that they're expressing about Israel. They, in, during the period of the peace talks, they accused Israel of spreading AIDS intentionally amongst Palestinians, of, of spreading drugs amongst Palestinians, of stealing body parts of Palestinians, of, uh, of poisoning Yasser Arafat and killing him, of planning to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And I don't mean these were one time. These were ongoing libels yeah. over and over and over again. Uh, they had cultural programs, which were on TV, where they talk about Israel as having killed Yasser Arafat, just like they killed Jesus. And this is youth and children on this cultural program. In fact, we have a video of that. That okay. appeared on TV, and we could... Here it is. Watch. Yaba! Yaba, ya khityar! Now, this was a PLO cultural event. The Palestinian Authority Minister of Culture was in the audience. It was a very, very important event. And because of that, it was filmed on Palestinian TV. Now, I question, what were the, thi what were the, the people who planned this event thinking when they put those words into those children? Are these people who are trying to encourage peace between the Palestinians and Israelis, or are they trying to build barriers that shouldn't even exist? And, and this is, like you say, one example amongst hundreds and hundreds of examples in this book of this ongoing demonization. Um, we have that. Now give me the demonization of the Israeli uh, soldiers shooting a Palestinian in the head. Warning, this one's a little graphic. Yep. You want to set this up or just go? Here it is. <laughs> This was a public service announcement on official Palestinian TV, government controlled and owned Palestinian TV. And they were trying to tell you, uh, trying to teach people about the, the job of a medic in Palestinian society. And this was one of the examples that they chose. An Israeli intentionally targeting a civilian with that, you saw the sight on his forehead and then, and then shooting and murdering him. So again, demonizing Israelis, they're intentionally trying Let's to Let's go him. back to the kids. Um with the, the Jews killing Arafat. Yeah. One of the things there. that we look to all the time uh, is we look at the input the kids are hearing and we look at the output, the way kids are talking. And there has been so much demonization that Israel killed Arafat that when they interviewed children uh, to hear them talk about Arafat on the anniversary of his death, this is what we heard children say. <laughs> Those lines are so tragic. First, he thinks Israel poisoned him because he's heard that so often. And then he said, you know what, I really don't know, but I know it must have been the Jews. That is the result of the endless demonization that a child can think that he doesn't know why something bad happened in the world, but if it's bad and it happened, it must have been the Jews who caused it. That's the tragedy of this education. Okay, now let's go, because when you indoctrinate, then you go, the next logical step is they're going to do something about it, and violence. Exactly. Let's go to the next piece. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, another tragic example of the output. This was a program where they go to the homes of Palestinian terrorists who are imprisoned in Israel and they interview family members. 
Well, these are two young nieces of a Palestinian terrorist, female terrorist. And they asked them what they wanted to say to the camera. So one of them spontaneously starts this song, which obviously she had learned either in school or at home, uh, where she wants to take a machine gun and go and fight and liberate her land from the Israelis who, who've taken her land. And the, the interesting thing is that halfway through the song, this other girl joins in. She also knows the song. So this is obviously something that is around. Kids are learning this. And this is what they felt appropriate uh, to sing to the cameras. And then, of course, Palestinian TV chose to include this in the long interview. So it, the problem here is the output. And the problem is, why does Palestinian television constantly promote this kind of material if they're interested in having a peace process? You know, I was uh, sitting, in the, um, um, sitting at this luncheon yesterday, and I'm listening to you speak, and I'm seeing some of these clips up here. And I'm thumbing through this book, and I'm reading some just horrible things. I mean, verbatim, verbatim things that are being said. And you said at one point, imagine children here in America saying these things. Do you remember this part of your speech? Yeah. You, say it. Imagine. Well, imagine how could children in America, or whoever the children are who are going to hear this material, how could they ever have a relationship with those other people? Children are a clean slate. What you teach them is the way they see the world. And if you teach them from this young age that the Israelis... Are, 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 are or this evil, or anyone is evil. Anyone is trying to kill them. Anyone is trying to poison them. Anyone poisoned their hero. Yasser Arafat's their hero. He created the Palestinian people. Uh, and, and Israelis went and poisoned him. You put this all together, how is that next generation going to keep a peace we, with We Israel? are so careful in our own society to never say... I mean, we have Kiefer Sutherland. We want you to know that we here on 24 want know that all Muslims are not bad. And that's why we put together this pamphlet and handbook, and that's why we're here telling you. I mean, we work so hard to make sure. And <clears throat> even, even when I'm talking to my own children, not because I'm being politically correct, but because it's true, I make sure I tell my children, this is, this, this is a s small group of crazy people. That's not, they happen to be Muslim, but that's not what all Muslims are like. I even do that in, in my own home with my own children. That's the way we teach. That's not being taught here. That's not being taught. You, you, when I'm listening to you yesterday, I thought to myself, somebody, and I'm putting this challenge out, somebody needs to make a commercial here in America, in an American setting, at a home, where somebody c comes in and says, what'd you learn in school today, kids? Oh, Mom, I don't know. I learned that all the Canadians, um, you know, they poisoned John F. Kennedy, and they're all pigs and animals. And uh, I just, we're, uh, you know, we sang this new song about getting a machine gun and killing them all. Yeah. And putting it into context, it, we just accept for some reason or another that, oh, yeah, well, this is always going on. No, this is poison, and we would never accept it from the Canadians, we'd never accept it from our own self about the Canadians. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, I agree with you completely that, uh, in fact, there are opposite processes going on here. In the Palestinian Authority, they'll take possibly sometimes an unfortunate event that may have happened, and then they'll globalize it and say, this is the way Israelis are. They are all trying to do this to mm -hmm. you. We do just the opposite, and you describe it amongst your children. I mean, it's the same thing with our children. I'll tell you an interesting personal story. Um, a couple of years ago, during the terror, Palestinian terror campaign, which is also called by the Palestinian Intifada, uh, they were blowing up buses, as everyone knows, uh, over a thousand people killed in bombings, and they were also throwing stones at Israelis on the roads. And uh, one of those times, a, our car was hit by a stone. Um, my son was asked, I had a young son in the car at the time, who was probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11, so I said, do you think we should, and it was a intentionally a challenging question. Do you think we should get rid of all the Arabs and make them leave our country? And he thought for a moment and he said, only the ones who are throwing the stones. And I thought that was the perfect answer. Even at his young age, he had learned from us, Arabs are not bad, Arabs are our neighbors. Arabs can be a wonderful part, uh, not, just, not just putting up with them, they can be wonderful neighbors and, and should be a part of our, our country. Um, but not the ones who are throwing stones, not the ones who want to, not the ones who want to disrupt the peace. And I think that's we're taking all the evil that's out there, and we're we're putting it into a little compartment and saying we're against the evil, and we're not generalizing. And they're you, doing the opposite. I want you to go to palwatch.org. That's right. Palwatch.org Pal, Pal right now, and I want you to um, 
I want you just to spend, if you spent 15 minutes just reading the stuff that's on this and seeing the videos with your own eyes.